Yeah, I timed it right. Welcome to Mistress of Reeds. Woo! And way there, too much energy there. Mistress is a back, bitches. I got, I got Madam Boo on the line, and I'm Mistress OP because I need a little extra money on the side. <laughs> I, got, got I, got, I gotta buy a new garage door, y'all. <laughs> and she got her name right two weeks in a row, y'all. I, I don't know why I got it right now, but it just happened that way. So how you doing, Boo? How's I'm, how's Madam? I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. I've been high for a week, but I'm mm. good. That's good. That's good. I'm doing okay, except for we're about to do King of Code. And I and I, and, and I and I hurt I hurt a bit I hurt <laughs> I, I like I like I can't even explain how much I hurt about this I like I, I was like I don't understand why I hurt about this so much but I hurt <laughs> we have to rip off the bandaid though because yes yes yeah I I don't I I don't want to can we just can we just go on a field trip. No, no, we can't now unless it's to the dispensary and only if you're paying. Uh, <laughs> those dispensary prices, though, they're just climbing. Like the organic shit is just flying off. I the actually, shelf. I just buy, for the most part, I buy pre rolls because I don't have the time and I have too much shit to do to just sit there and smoke a pre roll to the head. So, mm. you know, I'll get like a couple pre rolls, take a few puffs here and there, go on with my day. Take a few puffs later on before bed. Knock the fuck out. Wake up in the morning. Take a couple more puffs to start the day. And you maybe know, we should get good. a job at a dispensary. Maybe that's the job you need. It's really funny though because I actually find it really fascinating. Like what, like what different strains like are more specific for what condition, and what is it about the strain that causes you? that? You speak yeah. sign language and shit. They need to get you a job, yo. Yeah. And, and I can read braille. Up. Yeah, you could put those Braille co labels on and shit, you know. Just saying. Dispensaries. Madam needs job. I'd be paid in cash, too. Mm-hmm. 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 Maybe. Maybe. See, I knew. I knew that's what we needed to do. Something in my heart tell me, told me you needed a weed job. We finally figured it out. High five. Well, I'm still waiting for you to start your grow house. Why am I? I'm not gonna. <laughs> okay, okay. Let me let let me you let me. It's not legal in California, so let me just let me just put a kibosh on this. <laughs> it's not legal yet, but all the states are required to only to only sell that which is grown in that state, though. True. So, I, I honestly, I I think like when I, I yeah, this is not a topic from BookTube. But when when California becomes online, it's gonna be like a huge, huge, like really online because it ain't even online yet. Like the price of farming is gonna go way up, which will be wonderful for our fuck our dry freaking fields and stuff because dry fields and and semi arid climates, we love that stuff because it's less likely to mold. Why do you think Afghanistan makes some good freaking weed? <laughs> you know, I'll come, I'll help you harvest, I'll do your labels and all the packaging. Yeah, no, I'm good. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna get, I'm good. I'll bring, uh, I'll probably be growing zucchini because I really oh, like uh, Mexican uh, zucchini and the avocados and the pomegranates and the tomato plants. <laughs> you just, just plan my life out though. Thanks. Yeah, with your ducks and your ducks can wander the field. Well, you can have the ducks <laughs> near the weed though, even though they work really well. If they actually ducks really like um like the leaves, they give me feed ducks hemp and they like the hemp leaves and they also like like regular marijuana leaves too. Okay. <laughs> Back on topic. King of code. Maybe she should do king of weed instead. Maybe. You know what? That could be interesting. You know, if you had changed the king of weed thing, if you had changed it, I would have believed this character more. As it would have made weed. more sense. Or even King of Wall Street, too. Yeah, well, King of Wall Street would have him leaning more. I mean, he is douchey, but leaning way more towards douchey. Yeah, but King of Weed or King of King of Kush? <laughs> King of Kush. Uh, King of Kush. I, think, uh, I think that would actually be a lot better. A lot better. 
A lot better. A lot better. A lot better. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about this. King of Code was is by C.D. Reese. Um, she's a bestseller, best-selling author. We have a a label on her, which is always buy, always buy. I she always has reads. decent audiobook readers. She always has good laid out books, even though she's pretty much, for the most part, has been independent. I think she's under Flip City Media now, but I I believe she still owns her her most of her rights. Um, and I'm not sure if that's even, that might even be her publishing company. I don't know. <laughs> um, it's about, uh, Taylor Hay- Hayden or whatever. And he's like one of those kind of it's tech like pros the- who's just about to come out with this, like this huge product, this huge product that is OS. Like, um, he's trying to re- uh, release an OS. Yeah. Yeah. Which is a clean OS, meaning that it doesn't sit on the back of other OSs, which he doesn't really explain that well um, in the book. Which is like kind of the it's it's kind of a, a golden grail, especially if you're a country like, for example, China's OS sits on the back of Linux, so it would be better for China if China had just created their own OS instead of sitting on the back of Linux. But Linux is a very solid. Um, same thing with North Korea, I think. Yeah, yeah. When you do, when you have a code that isn't based in anything anybody gets their hands off, it's kind of like having a secret um, decoder ring type thing, except for it's not based on English, any language to date. So if you had a pictorial, a pictorial, you base it on a pictorial symbols that don't exist in any, you know, not based in any language whatsoever, before you know or any idea of like well because then you would still have the idea so that's not exactly right but <laughs> it, it's just it's harder to it's harder to to crack because you are the only one with the key i think that's a better way to explain it i've never actually had to explain it that often because normally when i talk to people they know what i'm talking about already and so i feel weird about it and perhaps this is what the translation issue is going on in king of code itself what do you think? Uh, I'm so trying to hold so much. We're so uncomfortable for like the second part of this, and I'm trying. I'm trying my best. I'm having one of your moments. I'm trying to contain the rage. Um, Why? <laughs> Why? Why are you doing this to us? Uh. See, I was so excited about reading this book because, like, I'm such a geek, and yes. and 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 to, to code, code and sex. Oh yes, that's like video games and sex. Yes. Yes. Anime and sex, as long as it's not like anime with sex. Other than See, that, the difference, yeah. No, no, I'm <laughs> I'm I'm reading subs, so that would mean I have to read subs while I ride out. So, <laughs> so I, I'm like you. I can't just listen. So I would just, you know. Well, I'll leave that. I'll leave that match to you, girl. <laughs> but, but like you know, I was just like, oh, this is gonna be fucking awesome, and I just, I, I oh, it hurts. It just hurts. I love CD Reese. I do. I, I really, really do. And, and, and I feel, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm gonna be the bad guy. I, I feel like this book was beneath her. There you go. I said it. Mm. Now I'm going to hide under my desk. <laughs> well, I would also say that it troubles me. It troubles me so much that we never really feel the heart for his craft. No. We feel the heart for the wealth he would get instead of the craft of knowing that. I mean, this is like, this kind of stuff is like the holy grail. You know, clean OSs are like the holy grail. Like, this should be like his ultimate zen moment, the way that it, it should be written. Like, this and is like. How dare this person fuck with his zen? And he doesn't know if this person is like just some little asshole kid. He doesn't know if this person is, you know. 
if they're bouncing a signal from somewhere else and it's a foreign country, he doesn't know. He doesn't know any of that stuff. Instead, it's you know, I gotta get my money. Gotta make my investors happy. Da 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 da. And it's just like it doesn't feel. Yeah, it, it feels very like bro. It. He's the kind of guy who would be a Wall Street bro or a pharma bro. It's not about the innovation and the joy and the and the drive of the craft. It's about how do I get this money and scam these investors out of their money? And oh, oops, I accidentally made a decent product. Okay, whatever. Either way, <laughs> it's like, ugh. and this is the kind of shit that like Shark Tank buys. Yeah, it's like, it's like, I, it's like, I, I, what's his name? What's his name? Um, Mark Cuban had said years ago that if Texas had the loose money, even though it does, because it has a lot of oil money, if and it has a lot of small time oil money too at that. If it had the loose money that California had, then it would it would also have a tech boom. Mind you, it did have a tech boom, but the problem wasn't necessarily um the tech boom it's the problem wasn't necessarily that the that the loose money. The problem was you have to have loose money who has enough knowledge and people who have enough knowledge to bridge the gap. You have to know what to invest in and know what to pay off on, you know? Angel yeah. funding is dependent not only on on just money, it's on the understanding of what's a good idea and what's not. That's the way angel funding works. And I think it's interesting that this is the first time I've ever seen T.D. Reese's books say romance contemporary romance did not finish contemporary on goodreads in the genre section the, the first thing is did not finish wow that has never happened for cd reese ever i have have you ever seen did not finish on one of her general listings no i mean <sighs> this is not good <laughs> It's a beautiful it, it cover. Really, it hurts to say this, though. It really does. It, it makes me sad to to say this because I I really do I really truly enjoy C D Reese's stories. I love how they're tied together in some way, shape, or form. I love the sex. I love the actual story around the sex. But this book, I I love the minutia of the character actually doing their job and understanding it and the look inside of that person's world. This book just felt so shallow to me. I like. I half expected, you know, what they really need to do. They need to take the cover off and remove the guy with the fucking suit and just put the normal guy with that with the speedo on and a and a and a, <laughs> and a gold speedo on the cover because that's what we're getting. And, and, and the long flowing hair. It's has the beneath long you. Hair. It's beneath you. And I think that, and in this this. I don't know if this is this, that there's a second book and I don't know because there's this series that she did called marriage games, which is slightly hardcore, um, but not too hardcore. So you can sort of watch the train wreck without going, Ooh, blood, <laughs> <laughs> but it's a train wreck of like ideas and concepts. And it's, it's, it's like, I, I mean, I, me and my friend who is a listener, Hey girl, <laughs> uh, hey joe okay uh, me and my friend who read it together um she was like normally she's like cd reese you know woo, <laughs> you know because it's like really it's really nice and it's really grindy and you know it's like get your tingles before you get your get mingles you know <laughs> I, can, I can already say this now my nice my, my oldest sister who who tends to read us you know, she she uh, was worked as an analyst and a programmer during the tech boom, and she's gonna hate this book <laughs> because it's the worst of the tech bros. It's like he's the epitome of a tech bro. It's like nobody's gonna realize. The worst part is is that nobody's gonna realize that this guy's a tech bro who's reading her books. Like half her readers won't get it. They'll just think he's a bit shallow, but they won't realize that this character in the tech world is the guy you punch. Yeah. No, because he has no joy. He has no joy for what he's doing. And he doesn't even have that that that, you know, the 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 high functioning autistic, you know, drive for it. He doesn't have any of the things you want to see 
Yo, are you saying he's just like a guy who should have gone to Wall Street? Or you know what they should have done? The king of code should have been about micro purchases on um micro micro purchases on on Wall Street. It would have been a better book. Yeah, because that would have been king of code too. I, you know, you know, personality better. You notice he kind of shit talked Bitcoin. <laughs> well. <sighs> Especially being like a, a a code bro, I always think that he would enjoy Bitcoin since it's a huge tech shelter. But yeah, you know. a lot of people, some people, what he's trying to do isn't a long term. It isn't a long term con. It's a short term con, which he's trying to flip to these investors. That's what he's, but what he's, what he, what the product he has he, that he's selling is a long term investment idea. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So she has a long term investment idea, which has several different layers and several different, you know, things going on, but she's treating it like a short term, you know, con website, you know, like a, a like a, like a, a YouTube clone, or when they used to come out with a hundred YouTube clone clients, and they had like this one little spice feature, but they weren't as good as YouTube, or you know what have you. Yeah, that's what you're dealing with here, and it's just not fun. It's it's just not fun, yo. <laughs> it's just not fun. It is. This is not fun. It's not fun. It's not a good look, yo. And I just, I feel, I feel, I'm not going to go deeply into this. It's going to be spoiler free because I think I'm going to actually put did not finish and I ain't doing it. I don't want to do it. I didn't want to do it. I didn't. I'm going to, I'm going to try to fight my way through. I am, (sighs) but it won't, it won't be like, you know, late night while laying in bed listening to, I'm going to listen to it while gaming. (laughs) <laughs> it might have a turn moment like marriage games does and i'm working my way through it i'm gonna make it, I'm gonna make it it's just not in a timely way i'm doing like i'm let me check my let me check i'm my, too um, far into it for that turn moment to matter now <laughs> <laughs> let me let me let me look how far i'm into it um i'm looking now i'm about 70 percent finished so I yeah, think, I'm a bit higher than that. Like I'm about, I'm about eighty, eighty-five percent. I'm gonna, I'm gonna power through. There's a second book called Queen of Rust. Okay. It's supposed to come out, and it's the duet. Okay. And so, wait, wait, Queen of Rust. Okay, so we have here King of Code, Queen of Rust, White King, White Knight. Oh no, it's for uh, the series. Oh. So when's White that next night? A-list coming out? <laughs> <laughs> this might be, and this is an untitled series, by the way. And it's going to center around the um, Barrington family. Yeah, so so A-list. When, when's that next A-list coming out? <laughs> that's, the, that's the book I'm waiting for now. <laughs> uh, I, will, I will read this series because I, I need to understand why. But at the same time... I'm not. <sighs> okay, wait. You no, know, let me then let me rephrase this. This this isn't gonna go to a second part. So King of Code is the end of King of Code, and then we switch to new set of characters, which is the 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 actual master hacker guy, which is the dark web specialist, a Brit who may or may not have been who uh, worked for uh, MI6. And oh, now that could be interesting. Please, 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 series. I, and the homecoming queen of an oxidized city. Oh, this she's queen of rush. Well, this should be interesting then. All right, I, I will. I will continue with with this with this series. And I don't know. I, 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 well, maybe we maybe we just need to take it like a grain of a, a, a grain of salt, like every other first book of a, of a series. You gotta get through the first book, and then everything else is fine. I I I want to be optimistic. Why do, why do you sound like you're pushing out a baby, bitch? Because it feels like it. Jackson, <laughs> <laughs> Jackson, that Tukey's, then it's gonna be okay. It's, it's gonna, be, gonna okay. be okay. Well, 
I uh, well, OP says fuck you. You know. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm gonna be optimistic, and I'm usually the one that's just like, no, fuck that. No, I'm gonna be optimistic. Fine, I'm fighting my way through. It's a pretty cover. <laughs> it's a pretty cover. What is up with that these days, though? Like, cover. good, great books with crappy covers. Not so great books with really good covers. Like, what, what the she hell? She always has a good cover, though. I wouldn't have been surprised if C.D. Reese was, like, a graphic designer before she was a, uh, writing these books. I wouldn't be surprised. She always has very solid covers. Whoever does her can have covers. And they have a consistent design theme, too. So I'm thinking she continually uses the same person, whoever that person is. So. That would make sense. Cause she's just making the best covers. <laughs> well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna finish this book. I am gonna finish this book, and probably if we didn't sit down and actually talk about it like we, like we have been doing just now, I probably wouldn't have. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fight my way through. <laughs> They're like book club. We're like holding hands on the Yellow Brook Road here. We're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. <sighs> Just gotta get to the end of the Valley Hobbit Road and then meet that asshole Oz. <laughs> you know, I'm just I'm gonna I'm gonna take this one as a mulligan and oh. and I'm gonna continue with the rest of the series. Do you remember Oz on HBO? Yes, I do. That was an awesome series. Because you know, more than half the cast was in Law and Order Special Law Yeah, Law and Order Special Victims Unit. <laughs> 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 but yeah. I, I remember Oz. I actually watched most of Oz. Not all of it, but most of it. You might have watched the whole thing and not realized it because it ended it ended weird. The whole thing was weird. Yeah, but it's sort of like I don't know what I don't know. Uh, like after a while it's like they gave up and just started killing everybody. Well, isn't that just prison though? <laughs> I mean, it's a pretty decently high mortality rate. But <laughs> yeah, but, you know, I'm just saying Orange is the New Black has limited how many people they kill. Well, then it's again, a woman's prison. <laughs> yeah, but women are more vicious. True, but you can generally live. <laughs> the mortality rates in men's prison is actually unusually high. In fact, the only, the only death that actually upset me in Orange is the New Black is the one that was already pre-planned way uh, around season one, I think, uh -huh. according to interviews. Ah, uh, ah, uh, gotcha, gotcha. Um, other than that, like, the rest of them, I was like, kill a bitch. Like, like <laughs> Roz, Riker, Roz. Was that Was that, was the character's name, Roz, or something like that? I was just like, kill the bitch. Shanker, Shanker. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. I wanted her dead. I wanted the little, I wanted the annoying little... Little adopted Asian girl dead. <laughs> she got on my nerves. <laughs> you remember the one chick with the short hair? Which one? The super short hair that was like a heartthrob for like a second. Who oh, looked like about, Justin Bieber. You're talking about uh, Ruby Rose. Yeah. Ruby Rose, she still is a heartthrob. I totally do her. Oh. <laughs> I, need a, I don't know. I need a bit more. I, I, I need more, more, more booty. More booty. <laughs> I don't know because the rare times that like you see her, well, not rare times, but the few times that I've seen her in a dress, like she has a wicked me, onion. Let me let me let me let Ruby Rose, Ruby. You know it, Ruby Rose in dress. Sorry, you sorry. This is how. This is how. <laughs> I would yeah. I would still. I would still yeah. I'd shag Ruby. Um, as a boy, as a girl, I don't care. That is lovely. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, it, it kind of does work. It's not huge, though, but it's it's good. It's cute for sure. She has some good thighs, though. Yeah, she does. <laughs> I have a thing about thighs. I really do. Like, I, it, it, I like good thighs. But she's skinny down though. That's the problem. Like from her from her Australia days, she used to be a bit thicker. I kind of like it a bit thicker. She fit them outfits better. Some of these models look like coat hangers out there. I swear. 
you know, a friend of mine used to do um, quite a bit of runway modeling during the the mid '90s for mm-hmm. certain designer. And uh, if let let's say there was a fashion show coming up or whatever, and they're even like slightly overweight, one of the first things that they would recommend was to tell the models to actually do like heroin for four days. No wonder what somebody needs to sue these people for for job issues. Seriously. You know, it would, cause, like, cause starving doesn't drop the weight fast enough. Oh. I guess diet pills are real, yo. I, I you know what I always hate is like when you see the Victoria's Secret models, like I don't mind there being a couple like skinnier models, but I wish they would put somebody out there with some booty who could fill that shit out. That or like they're not allowed to drink water. But they're allowed to have one or two ice cubes a day for like three days. So they don't retain water. Stupid shit like that. I wish that they would put some women out there who had some like meat on their bones to fill out the little lingerie. So there's like something to look at. They used to. They had Tara. They don't anymore. All of them are super, super freaking skinny. Honestly, the Victoria's Fashion Show. I stopped watching that shit when they had Ariana Grande, and it because it really bothers me that the world keeps sexualizing a child that looks like she's thirteen. She's not thirteen though, but she looks like it, and that isn't sexy to me. That's scary to me. <laughs> it's like if she gives you wood, probably most likely you you really need, you really need to rethink some of your choices. <laughs> okay, so I had in high school, I had a friend who was a little well I didn't have a friend I had a friend of me who was a little person <laughs> she wasn't a friend she wasn't really an enemy she was like friend of me territory now she she was she was she was she was like really little and <laughs> she's like like an actual like handicapped little person person you know she could go for the handicap and she was mean as hell uh but the thing is is that she couldn't help the way she looked. She still had to live her life, even though she walked around in skanky clothing sometimes. <laughs> especially in high school, especially in college, what I saw in college. And so she she actually got a full-size man as her boyfriend. And yes, I had moments where I had to fight myself from calling him a you-know-what. But you know, she has to be her, you know? I, I get that. I, I do get that. But at the same time, I just... You know, and then like her main audience too are, are teenage girls and and really young teenage and, girls. Yes, I mean, really young she teenage like girls a and, rat doll. and grown ass men. And it's just like that's a crowd that should not mingle. And, and you know, and it could just be me because you know I am the mother of a teenager, but so yeah, Dolmas has like that perpetual youthy look. You know, like, I love Selena Gomez, actually. I, I really, really do. Because I think, like, with her illness and everything, she's definitely has matured and has left a lot of that stupid bullshit behind. But, yeah, she's not going to... She, she's she's always going to look really, really young. And she's not going to fill out the way Demi Lovato did. No, yeah, she's always going to look... She's gonna, she, you know, if she was a black person, I would say Cocoa Butter is good to her. But, <laughs> she's not, oh, they, no. She's never but at the same old. time. To me, Selena Gomez doesn't. Very long time. She doesn't feel as young to me as Ariana Grande does, though. I don't know why. She, she feels super young, but no, she doesn't feel. She doesn't feel. She doesn't feel. She doesn't feel old, but she doesn't feel. She doesn't feel super young. Like Selena yeah. Gomez feels high school to me, where Ariana Grande feels like middle school. <laughs> mm-hmm. So it makes it worse because she's just like, oh. And like the worst possible crowd, like mingles at her concert. But Grown ass man and young that, teenage girl. Selena Gomez walks around like she's eighty years old. True. Like her, her body is physically rebelling against her constantly. Yeah. And so she actually has a walk cycle that looks really, really like she's in pain half the time. Well, she has lupus. Yeah. So she so, I mean, probably that- is in pain all the time. <laughs> True. Not to make fun of her or anything like that. No. As I before, I, I really do. I, I, I don't know. Like I, out of all the little like like singers that came out around that time when when Lily was going through her early puberties, Selena Gomez was actually the only one I was actually comfortable with her listening to. 
because a lot of them were sending out some really fucked up mixed messages. <laughs> and Selena Gomez, for the most part, kept her her shit pretty normal for a while. And, and now that you know, and 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 I I feel like her music is maturing as as her audience is maturing. And and yeah. and that's good. Where but, I, you're, you, but Lily's like tail end of Selena Gomez audience. Oh no, no, no! Wizard. Is she actually the target? Because I thought Selena's, I thought Selena's target audience is around like eighteen now. Lily started. What? Lily's gonna be seventeen in December. Oh. She started watching Wizards of Waverly Place when she was like four or five years old, and it just went from there. Okay, I thought that the Wizards of Waverly Waverly Place watch was like ten. That was no. like ten or, or 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 like seven. If it was on Disney. It, they were watching it. Okay, gotcha. Gotcha. We we got sidetracked here, and <laughs> <laughs> but it was a good sidetrack. It was a weird sidetrack, but it was a good sidetrack. Now I got a message from my friend who subscribed. Thank you, thank you, thank you, my friend who's number sixty one. I see you. I hear you, and she wants to know if we're gonna read um fix the fix series by um. Our 61st survivor. Hey. Okay. <laughs> she wants to know if we're going to read this fix series by, or we're going to talk about the fix series by um, Lauren Page. And it's, I, and I was going to talk to you about it on air. I was going to spring this on you because I'm a bitch. <laughs> oh, so you're going to try to like push me into a yes no, no, or no? I'm not. I'm not. I'm not because this, this, this is hard because I don't know if you're going to like it or not. And I don't want to give too much away, but I really don't think, I don't know if you're going to like it. I don't know if you're going to like the series you or not. always say that. I, always I honestly say don't that. Know. The first book isn't that good. <laughs> the uh, first book isn't that good, and the second book has a turning point in it. But the second book, you may or may not like the idea or the concept. So I'm going to go ahead and talk about it right now, and we're going to start it. If you like C.D. Reese, you're probably going to like Lauren Page for the most part, but only this series from Lauren Page. She has another series that isn't quite... The thing about C.D. Reese is she's always going somewhere in her books to some big, oh my god, that really happened moment, or oh wow, really? And this one series by Lauren Page is the only one that really successfully pulls that off in that really well thought out way. And she's like, comparatively speaking, the one that I would say, if you haven't read this series and you are into, um, and you're oh. into CD Reese, you should read it. Okay, yeah. so I just read the synopsis for their first book, and it seems like someone is suffering from crazy bitch syndrome. Exactly. So, that's like, oh <laughs> that's okay, so gonna be interesting. In the it is. series, it's about a um character, a main character named Alana Withers. I, I didn't say that right. <laughs> And she she has a habit of stalking men, like super stalker mode, to the point where you know call the police stalker, you know to the point of you're gonna actually get a restraining order because this is really happening stalker. And she's been doing this her whole entire life, and it's it's kind of a play on the whole hot male lead stalker guy thing. He loves me so much stuff, and it's it's. It's it's really interesting because they both have issues. They both have a character arc here, and it's very interesting train wreck. And it's so train wrecky that I'm just so happy. <laughs> it's kind of like every stalker girl gets her day, kind of serious. <laughs> well, I I wouldn't say that it's an every stalker girl gets her day, but it's really it's an interesting case study. <laughs> Case study is a terrible world. You know, there's this one CD re series where I'm like, this is a case study. <laughs> you know yeah. the one I do not want to read. All right, I will try the first book. I'm willing to give it at that. least make it to the to the to the second book. I, I will try my best. But if you don't like it, we'll go ahead and talk why you don't like it, and then I'll go into the series and we'll talk about it. But I, I, she was wondering if we we're talking about this is an older book, and this is this. I'll well, put this on our playlist of. We still have to get to Dante Valentine. Well, I start. I I said I do October Day before Dante. Okay. Remember, because we did. Yeah. Um, we did. October, I, yeah. I do Dante. Then I guess this will come in after. 
I have it'll take a long time for me to finish October and Dante because they're series. So this is easier to talk about because I can go through it hella quicklier than I can Dante. And I can listen to because I listen to Toby on the train. <laughs> I listen to Toby on the train. You know, that's where I listen to Toby. Because I'm awake and actually listening to it instead of, you know, just whereas this, I figure you're gonna listen to it while you game. Although I don't think you should because there's money parts. <laughs> I, I spend quite a bit of money on my headsets to make sure that that's not going to be a problem. In okay. fact, I, you don't have money linkage. Gotcha. No money. In fact, there are people when I'm on when I'm on Discord and whatnot. There are people that hear my kid better than than I hear her, so I know that she's not hearing anything that I'm hearing. Okay. Uh, just some random stuff, and then I still have to read the next series, which I'm going to do next year, <laughs> not this year, because Nick is like ten books. How many books is next? Eight. Eight. Okay, yeah, I'm going to do it next year. So I still got to do October Day first, though. And which I'm working on, but this is part of our this is part of our playlist of books. If you're looking for a book, a guaranteed book that has like a 70% chance that you sort of love it, this is part of our playlist of that. This seventy percent chance you will love fix fix on you series the fix series by Lauren Page and that's what we're reading next um, two weeks from now probably okay I have it on the calendar all right <laughs> all right now we were supposed to do hocus pocus but we sort of got left with a raw egg here uh, a spoiled egg and we just had to because we weren't going to be able to not talk about this book correct yeah it. it well, hurt. Yeah, the, I, I am sorry, C.B. Reese. I am. We love you. I'm, I'm still a fan. I love you very much. I don't say I love some. I don't say I love an author, author that often. I'm psychotic. I do not do that. I do not give my love lightly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're the same way, right? There's only three authors I can honestly say that I genuinely love. Exactly. We aren't one of those people who are just fangirling because blah, blah, blah. C.B. We actually, like, read what you're saying and look into it and analyze it and talk about it like, you know, fucking geeks. So, but honestly, this is not good. <laughs> this is not good. Okay. All right. Thank you for joining us. I'm going to get out of here. I have shit to do. And I want to thank everybody. And I want to thank our new subscriber for pushing us over 60. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Uh, do any final words? No, nothing, nothing really. Um, yeah, I'm good. I just want to add our hidden Patreon level of 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 domination is always available. <laughs> it's it, 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 for the price of three indecent proposals. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We we might even give you a two for, for six. All right. <laughs> All right. Thank you for joining us. Bye. Bye. You see.